What is up, Packers fans, and welcome to another episode of The Daily Draft, brought to you by Badger State Brewing in Green Bay. I'm your host, Ross Uglum, the publisher of Pack Report, and today we are doing our very first prospect primer, the subject of which is Alabama cornerback Kool-Aid McKinstry. Now, before we get into Kool-Aid, and I, I kind of mentioned this yesterday, I want to sort of bring you through... Um, how I get to where I get to in in scouting and, and some of kind of uh, my background. So I've, I've been uh, paying attention to the NFL draft for a long time and and certainly uh, made an effort to do this in sort of a, an educated way or, or do it the, the scouts way. Um, went through the, the, the process of the scouting academy, um, but, but really kind of developed also my own own way and the, the, the things that I like um, and don't like in players. Uh, certainly some of that influence, I would have to say, was, was from the way Green Bay does business, too. Um, I think they've done an excellent job. Uh, you know, have they had the the Super Bowl trophies that everyone probably wants? No, not not necessarily. I would say, you know, two in the Rodgers Favre era is disappointing, but a um, small market team. I know the NFL has a salary cap, but it's still not the most attractive place to free, for free agents. A small market team having the success that they have in and out a lot of that comes uh, from excellent scouting and and so that's you know why i do let some of what the packers like to do seep into my process as far as building out a board um i work with the folks over at fan speak and so um i need to have before they'll take it 270 names and, and how i get that is uh, i get there is is is, is pretty easy um I've, I've got access to to the real tape which is awesome um, especially when you can kind of, you know, run through a game. And so uh, when I get started, when, when I start at the very beginning, I'll, I'll watch three games and I'll go on Pro Football Focus. I'll find their, their two highest graded games and then the worst grade. And, and I'll kind of take notes on that. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of start to stack my board that way. But if I have a name on my board, it means I've seen at least three games. Now, by the end, I mean, my top 50, top 80, I've probably seen 10, 12 games. You get into my top 150, I've, I've seen at least six or seven games of, of all of these guys. I mean, I, it's what I love to do. I love to watch tape. I love to um, imagine what these guys can do in the NFL. And that that's the biggest thing for me, really, on the scouting side, um, is what can you do? Weaknesses are important for sure, but how can you win at the NFL level? Um, that's, that's the biggest, biggest thing for me, um, certainly on the scouting side, is what can uh, these guys do? If this gets cleaned up, what can this player be? And... Um, it's, it's served well. You know, I, I put my hit rate up there against anybody else in the industry. Um, I don't know who's necessarily keeping track of that, but I've had a lot of hits, had some misses, and uh, I stand by my work, and, and it, it's work that I truly, truly enjoy. And it's, of course, what kind of brought us here um, to the daily draft uh, portion of the Pack-A-Day podcast, partnering with Packer Report. And if you want to see some of that, guys, please do check out the Green Bay Draft Guide powered by Packer Report. We're going to have a link for you uh, right here in the show description, whether you're on podcast or on the YouTube side, and we'll have a coupon code for 10% off. And that code is daily, D-A-Y, or excuse me, D-A-I-L-Y, um, as in daily draft. That'll be your coupon code for 10% off the Green Bay Draft Guide powered by Packer Report. Okay, um, that's enough about me and, and kind of my process and, and what I do and don't like. Uh, let's get into Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think Kool-Aid, um, while I don't have him as my top corner in the draft, I think he's the best zone cornerback in this draft. And, and I know that that's going to get some people to kind of cringe, especially, um, Packers fans who have watched Joe Barry's, uh, defense really kind of, uh, you know, sink in big moments, play too far off, play a ton of zone. If you go look, percentage wise folks i mean everybody thinks that like the best defenses in the nfl are playing press man on every down they're not you know even the highest um percentages of, of cover zero and cover one and and, and two man in this league are, are not very high uh this is a zone league um and that's certainly also where you're going to get ball production you know you, you're going to get way more interceptions in zone than you are in man because that's really the design of the defense is to have your eyes on the quarterback. So it is important to be able to play zone coverage. Um, even great defensives play a ton of zone, and there are non-passive ways to play zone, and that's what Kool-Aid McKinstry does. His click and close is very impressive. Um, if you're going to play quarters, you're going to play cover three where you don't want anything to get over the top of him. He's got prototype size. 
six one long arms on film um we're gonna be obviously very transparent some of these episodes are going to be uh, recorded on days before you see them it's just sort of a way to to keep ahead i'm, I'm a dad i've got two uh, beautiful kids and four step kids that i love very much and uh, it's just life kind of comes at you in waves and so uh if i've got three four episodes in the tank i've got three four episodes in the tank you might not be getting this on the exact day, but we don't have combine data right now. We have what Alabama lists him at with, which I believe is six one one ninety five, um, and I'll believe the six one all day long. He's a long corner, but he's not too long. Uh, sometimes he's six foot three, six foot four corners that are great in theory, and you think you're getting Richard Sherman. Usually doesn't work out. A lot of the best corners in the league are between five eleven and six one. It just kind of is what it is, and allows for that lateral movement. These tall guys, it's tough for them to turn on a dime. Um, gets a solid run defense grade from pro football focus. That's important to me. I, I watch obviously the run defense tape, but, um, you know, he's, he's willing tackler and that's important. Um, it's something the Packers have struggled with out on the edge. Um, something that defense has struggled with in general. And a lot of times you think about a cover corner, somebody who is as good at covering, uh, receivers as Kool-Aid is, you think, well, he probably can't tackle. He can, he does tackle. He's big enough to tackle on the outside and um, has graded out well as a run defender, and that's going to be important no matter who the next defensive coordinator is. doesn't matter. 48% uh, completion against. That's important. That's impressive. You think like the NFL benchmark or a lot of quarterback coaches have their benchmark for completion percentage at 65. So if you're allowing 48.7% of the passes thrown your way to be completed, you know, that's a, that's a 17 18% decrease in their ability to complete balls at you. That's important. Um, I think he really sinks his hips well, and that's something that, like uh, a miss of mine, Josh Jackson did not do particularly well. And and that's something that you, whether it's you know matching uh, routes and zone coverage or uh, chasing guys down in man, you you got to be able to sink those hips and move. And as I mentioned, his click to close is impressive. He's twitchy for a six one guy, and and that's something that's exciting um, about Kool Aid. He's functional in press coverage. Moves laterally well, and and like I said, for an athlete of his length, um, he moves like a five foot eleven corner. So that's good. Cons: poor ball skills. Uh, does not turn around to play the ball, and I think that could hurt him at the NFL level because that leads to penalties. You don't get your head around in the league, and they call those penalties too um, at the college level. But you don't get your head around in the league; they will call pass interference. Uh, ball production almost non-existent. Um, two picks in three years. Just not great, but he's a shutdown guy. And and me at corner, I'll take the ball production guys at safety. If you give me two lockdown corners, which no team has that, but if you give me two guys that are just going to take away the guy across from them, I would rather have that than Deron Bland and his eight picks, Trayvon Diggs and his seven picks, but then getting turned into burnt toast by Matt LaFleur and Jordan Love. Like that's less appealing to me. The eight, nine picks, the guy that gets first team all pro because he brings four of them back for a touchdown because he's always gambling. You give me an actual lockdown, take you away, not up in here, Sauce Gardner type corner. I'm going to go that direction. I'm not saying Kool Aid's going to be that, or I'd have a, a better grade on him, but uh, the ball production is not there. And, and very little slot experience. He might be too slight to play inside. I think he's just an outside corner. Versatility is always a plus. Um, ultimately, guys do sort of settle into a spot. And if he's a great outside corner, that has tremendous value, tremendous value. But right now, I don't see him as, as a slot option. Um, I don't think he can play there, and I think he's going to end up outside. Okay, on to our next kind of segment or section here, the Packers fit. I think he's the outside corner across from Jair Alexander. If, if, if it's pick number 25 and Kool-Aid's still on the board, um, I don't know if they sprint the pick in, but I would be very comfortable with it being Kool-Aid McKinstry, and I think he just overtakes um, Carrington Valentine and Eric Stokes, and, and they are – fighting for, you know, kind of not necessarily the scraps, but sort of that whatever other way Eric Stokes or Carrington Valentine um, can help the team. Because I think if Kool-Aid McKinstry is the first round pick, he's going to be the corner starting across from Jair Alexander. Um, as far as expectations and guys, this, or not expectations, but thresholds. And guys, this is going to be um, a lot better when we get combine data and I have RAS scores and I have, you know, some of these minimums. For example, uh, when we talk about, and this is stuff that my friend uh, Jake Stack does a phenomenal job. You guys know him as Jacob Morley on, on Twitter. Hopefully I didn't just out him. Uh, but for example, here's stuff we don't know, okay? And, and here are the thresholds normally for a Packers cornerback. They like them 
to have a, a RAS above a certain number. Um, I, it looks to me like the lowest one that I see. It looks like above eight is is in the green for him. Um, they don't like old corners. They need their corners to be five, ten, seven, eight. They need their corners to run a faster than a four, six, forty, and they need their corners to run a three cone in less than seven seconds. Well, we don't know that relative athletic score. We don't know the force, the forty time, and we don't know the three cone time yet. When we get there, then we'll understand. And this is based on tons of research of guys that the Packers have actually taken. Then we'll get to understand, you know, whether Kool Aid McKinstry is a prime fit whether he's an okay fit and the Packers have taken some guys that are okay fits or whether he's maybe just not a fit like if he's a super linear athlete and runs a good 40 but runs a 7-3 three, three cone Green Bay's probably not going to be that interested and he's going to be you know not not the kind of a fit that they like but he's certainly young player um you know with with potential in front of him they like that it means that age threshold if you will um we think he's going to easily meet the height requirement and then we'll find out the rest as it kind of uh, goes along, but he's certainly above that five, 10 and seven eighths that the Packers prefer their corners uh, to be certainly a position. Green Bay has shown they'll take in round one. That's something else we'll talk about is where, where Green Bay may or may not fit. Cause some of these guys um, might go where the Packers aren't willing to take them. And, and that's not this. Um, the Packers will take a corner in round one. They've shown it. Brian Gutekunst has shown it twice. Um, he's not afraid to do it. Eric Stokes, Jair Alexander, and Demarius Randall have all gone to Green Bay in round one since 2015. Now, finally, my personal grade on Kool-Aid McKinstry, he's got a solid round one for me. He's got a, a solid round one grade. He's not a blue chipper. He's got a solid round one grade. Um, and, and for me, he's player number 17 overall. I will say the board is always moving, guys. So if I say that Kool-Aid is 17th overall here on, you know, late, late January. And in March, I say somebody else is 17th overall, Kool-Aid moved up or down. And, and, and that is based on getting athletic testing. That is based on talking to people within the industry, hopefully people within the league, based on watching more film. Um, and, and so guys are going to move up and down a little bit. Uh, guys are going to kind of burst onto the scene and that's where you get the movement. So if I do call somebody else 17 overall, um, you know, that's going to be Kool-Aid. And if Kool-Aid runs a four, six, he's not going to, but if Kool-Aid runs a four, six, he's probably going to move down to a round two or a round three grade for me, because that almost becomes a disqualifying time. And, and things like that do happen at the combine. But with the information that we have player 17, overall solid round one grade on Kool-Aid McKinstry folks find me on X at at Ross Uglum X Twitter, whatever it is that you want to call it, find our work over at packerreport.com. Check the links below for the Green Bay Draft Guide powered by Packer Report. And as always, like and subscribe here on the Pack-A-Day podcast. Thank you all for watching or listening, and go Pack Go!